Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and welcome to a new co-commentary series. It is, by somewhat popular demand, at least one person asked me to play this, and here he is with me! It's Josh Henry, friend of the channel. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure to have you uh, with me here because uh, you've left so many comments. You've supported me since the since I started doing YouTube. You were pretty much the only person leaving me comments on my videos. So, <laughs> so I'm so glad to have you uh, to be able to play a game with you. It's going to be great. And not only just any kind of game, but a Roberta Williams game, whom yeah. I know you love so much. Oh yes, I've been looking forward to this so much. <laughs> People have this this idea of me as being the sort of Sierra Online, uh, not not just Space Quest historian, but Sierra Online fanatic. And the truth is, I haven't played that many Sierra Online games, and this is one of them. Uh, played about five minutes of the Colonel's Big Quest, and then you know just went, okay, the chandelier fell on my head. Let's uh, <laughs> let's play something else. Well, this game has a lot of interesting ways to die, in true Roberta fashion. So <laughs> I think you'll find it entertaining. Yes, and I, I just recently bought this on GOG, and uh, it is now loading. I hope you can see it on your screen, Josh. I can. Yes, Josh unfortunately can't hear the nice MT32 music that was composed by Ken Allen, also composer of, C of Space Quest IV. Um, what you probably can see, Josh, is the copy protection. And... Uh, and Yes. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, this is about as far as I've seen of the game uh, since I bought it on GOG, because even though it does come with a manual uh, in the game directory, I couldn't be bothered. I just wanted to see if the MT32 was working and if the game would record, and it does. And uh, luckily for me, Josh actually has the original box. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> with everything in, that came inside. And let me tell you, this game came with a bunch of amazing feelies inside of it. One thing for the copyright protection, so the game comes with a map of the estate. It's a murder mystery, and uh, mm. you're going to be exploring this estate. And on the back of the map is a red... Uh, it's this kind of red. You can't really see anything through it unless you have one of these handy dandy <laughs> see through things. And it came with this magnifying glass that you use to try to find the fingerprint that matches. And so, what I am going to attempt to do is use this in the way it was originally intended yes. to find this fingerprint and get past the copyright protection. Yeah. And there, it's. It's not the most perfect, but you have to kind of look and feel and try to determine what <laughs> things are. And it can be kind of frustrating sometimes. It's not just a code wheel. It's not just enter this word on page whatever of a column whatever. No, no, no. You have to sit and scour through this. How, how big is that map? It's not like just an A4 page or whatever. Um, it's a pretty it's big one. It's probably um, about... I don't know. Let's say nine yards by, by 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, 12 inches by 12 inches. Yeah, that's a big one. Okay. That is Laura Bow's fingerprint. This one is Laura yes. Bow's. All right. Correct. The curtain is about to go right. up. Please be seated. Have you previously attended a performance of the Colonel's Bequest? So is, is this, not. do you want to watch the intro or not? Correct. And All it's right. pretty important, so I would watch it. All right, we have not attended a performance yet. Please indulge us. Ooh. Let me guess, someone's gonna get stabbed. Ooh. Do you want each of us to play different, like voice different characters? <laughs> sure, we can do that. Um, do you want to be Laura? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> I'll try to voice her the way that, uh, um. Ooh. Try to voice her the way that, uh, um, oh gosh, Leslie Balfour uh, voiced her in the second game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Leslie Balfour, who was also designing Space Quest Seven years, years later, uh, in the Colonel's Bequest sequel, The Dagger of Amon Ra, she is, she is Laura Bow. And the narrator, too. And the narrator, too. Ah, opening credits. This I'll is one of my favorite songs from the game. It's very upbeat and, uh... Well, it does have this sort of uh, 1930s feel to it, doesn't it? It's supposed to be yes. 
I was watching uh, Pushing Up Roses. Oh shit, he's got a levitating uh, wheelchair. <laughs> he's a wizard. Um, I was watching Pushing Up Roses um, talking about Clue and the uh, uh, murder mystery parties of the 1920s and 30s and such. Um, and I think this is most definitely a throwback to that era. Except for yes. the levitating humans, which is kind of disconcerting. <laughs> I believe it's set in mid-1920s. I'll tell you in a minute. I don't remember the exact date. Hmm. Oh, there she is. Plucky as always. We don't have to do the voice acting thing, but it'll be fun. It's up to you. <laughs> totally up to you. Oh, 1925. Yay. Yeah. A Tulane University. Was that a digital sound effect? I think it was. Directed by Roberta Williams and Chris Iden. Now, we are coming up on the era where Roberta Williams was uh, not technically designing games, but rather taking credit for games. Um, so, some would suggest that this game wasn't exactly... Oh, shit, something is happening. Hey, Laura, wanna come with me this week? Oh, wait, this should be a southern accent. Wanna come with me this weekend to my... Uh, whatever. I don't know. I have studying to do. <laughs> right. Oh, come on. It'll be a scream. It's such a creepy old place. You might find it interesting, the mansion that I previously mentioned, even though I didn't get that sentence out quite fast enough. Okay. Count me in. <laughs> That's about what she sounds like. I can't do it perfectly. Rizolka can do an amazing voice yes. of it. Yes. Two nights later, in the swamp where, uh, you know, Guybrush gets his voodoo supplies. <laughs> Holy shit, man. This gaunt motherfucker at the end here. What is what is his deal? It looks like Patrick Stewart after 72 hours in a tanning salon. <laughs> okay, well, I guess the only way to get here is by boat. So the, Correct. So the, uh, uh it's, it's... It's our friend's uncle's ancient, ancient mansion kind of thing. And it's on an island in the middle of the Louisiana bio. Oh. bayou. Uh, so I wouldn't actually wear short sleeves if I were them, but... <laughs> Look at his arms. We're here, Laura! Yay! Not creepy in the slightest. Okay, are we in control of something? Nope, not yet. Douglas Herring did an amazing job on the backgrounds of this game. Yeah, he did. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Lengthy pause. It looks interesting, all right. <laughs> Wait till you meet the family. It is creepy as all shit. Wait, did I say that out loud? <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's a big old church organ playing in this- Yes! Jeeves, don't you remember me? I'm Lillian. I have a British accent for some reason. <laughs> oh, yes. Everyone else has already arrived. Well, this guy looks like Lurch. <laughs> They're just sitting down for dinner. <laughs> Please go- Why doesn't he make eye contact? That's really <laughs> strange. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and voice the colonel. Okay, yeah, absolutely. During dinner... I'm glad you're all here. I'm sure you're wondering why I sent for you. Yes, very much. As you know, I'm a very wealthy man. I've invested my money wisely and have put away almost every dime. However, my end is near, and I have decided to bequeath my millions to each of you sitting at the table. Sounds good. Except, of course, Lillian's friend, Laura. <laughs> <coughs> Laura is now throttling Lillian. You bitch! Why did you... Anyway, as I have said, you're all inheriting my money, and you will inherit equally when I go. Fantastic. Sounds great. Game over. If any of you should die before I do, then your share will be distributed equally to the surviving parties. Now, why would he mention that? I'm tired, Fifi. Help me back to my room. That's... Good night, all. <laughs> Whoa, 
what a swell dinner party. No food being served. By the way, if you should happen to die tonight, then, uh, you know, you forfeit your money. Tough shit. Can you believe that? The old goat. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't try to take it with him. He's such an old skin flint. All right, let's just badmouth the host. I don't, I think, don't think you deserve any money. Speak for yourself. How much do you think he's got? Well, I know what I'm going to do with my share. Your share? I bet the old codger outlives you. Everyone is just arguing. Wonder how sick he is. Do you think he's going to go soon? Should we go and help him somehow? Maybe stab him in the throat or something? I've had enough of this. Laura and I will retire to our room now. <laughs> she said in a commanding voice for some reason. All right. Ah, uh, yeah, the clock. Yes, that's a very important gameplay aspect of this game. Yeah. It is going to... Every time you progress in the game, the clock is going to move forward. It's not like it's a real-time game. Also, it seems to take forever. It is saying a bing-bong booby kind of thing in the background. You don't have to listen to it every time it goes off, but... Well, damn it, I am now. <laughs> and these these girls are just... When it gets to midnight, it will literally chime 12 times. Okay. Well, I'll be the narrator then. This is the guest room you share with Lillian. Though a bit tired looking, it seems comfortable enough. Oh, I thought, she, I thought he meant Lillian. Lillian seems a bit tired. Well, we have been staring at each other for a full 20 minutes now, waiting for the chime to end. <laughs> Laura, dear, please excuse me. I'm going to go freshen up in the bathroom. Why don't you explore the estate for a bit? And off she fucks. Cool. Hmm, something doesn't feel right. Everybody's acting too strange, even Lillian. What would Daddy do in a situation like this? Oh, that's what we needed. Daddy issues. Well, there he is. Honey, if things don't feel right, they probably aren't. Observe the situation closely, yet be unobtrusive. Explore your surroundings quietly and carefully. Try to question the others without raising suspicion. Notice small details, take lots of notes, and above all, be careful. Nighty night, don't let the bed bugs bite. Nah. That is a weird thing to say to a kid. <laughs> Since you never go anywhere without your trusty notebook and pencil, you go to your suitcase, open it, and remove those two items. We thought we'd take it easy on you in this first puzzle. Yes, your father is right. <laughs> Observing the situation and taking notes would be a good idea. Hmm, yes. You know. Here you go. In case you missed them, this is the notebook. It was an actual notepad that came with the game Ooh. for you to take notes. And a pencil. It's hard to see, but it actually says Laura Bow on the pencil itself. And it's pretty and, awesome. Yeah, and we are not going to be using those items to take notes on. Because no. uh, that, that would seriously devalue uh, the, the, yeah, the value. It would devalue the value. Hey, here's a couple of interesting observations just right off the bat. I'm just walking Laura around the room. Hopefully no one will murder me while I do so. Um, hitting the up and down keys actually makes her walk at a slight diagonal. Yes. Because of the uh, way the floor tiles are, uh, uh, you know, positioned. That's interesting. And that is the way this game is done. All the screens are actually like that for the most part. She'll walk in a slight diagonal direction. But I can also yes. walk... In, in the, if you control these with the numpad. Incidentally, I've, I've watched a lot of people play old Sierra games on, on YouTube. It's amazing how few people realize you can use the uh, uh, directional keys on the numpad to move diagonally. Um, yes. So Trolls has never played this game before. I've played this game probably a couple hundred of times, and it's I'm going to help guide him without giving anything away. Hmm. Above the fireplace, you notice a picture of Colonel Dijon in his younger, more vital days. On the opposite wall, you also see a picture of a little girl. Funny, the girl's eyes have a strange hollow look to them. Well, secret passage, obviously. Um, except, where is this painting of a girl? It's on the opposite wall. You can't wall. see it, but it would theoretically be behind that chair right there. All right. So look, can I look? How, how smart is this parser? Uh, look, painting of girl? Nope. That's pretty much it. Uh, I don't think it has a specific look description beyond that. Hey, let's go through our friend's uh, suitcase. Yes, uh, Josh is here to guide me, but I am going to try and sabotage his efforts as much as I can. <laughs> Lillian's suitcase is locked. Uh, 
let's see, what's on the nightstand? Some of these tables could use a good dusting! Sorry, Roger wasn't born yet. <laughs> uh, is there anything we need to do in this room before I just take it apart completely? What do you think? I don't know, the, the dresser up here seems very innocuously placed, so... There's nothing of interest in it. Okay, I'm going to do what I've been thinking of doing since the game started. Climb through a uh, fireplace. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we're kind of good in here, aren't we? You can interact with a lot of things in this game, but in this room, you've done everything that you can for this moment. Okay. Go to sleep. You're not the least bit tired. Darn it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase her speed a little, her walking speed a little bit. Ooh, it looks as if this might have been a nursery at one time. Now it has been converted into a makeshift guest room with Ethel as its current guest. Oh, something I should tell you about this game. Since this is a murder mystery, you are expected to look at each of the Actually, people. Actually, fuck off. And they will move. They move like that. You have to be prepared for that. But not only that, you also have the ability to question them. And since it is a parser, you do actually have to ask Ethel about Lillian, ask okay. Ethel about Gertie. Um, I feel that you don't have to do that to everyone, but there are some specific questions that you should... I mean, to play the game correctly, you should be doing that to everyone, but it does take a while. <laughs> well, we'll see how much of an effort it really does take. Uh, I'm, I was kind of... I, I thought we were going to go out on a landing or, uh, you know, a hallway or something. No, we just go straight into another person's guest room. This is a weirdly layouted uh, house, I have to say. Well, I think this would have been like the parents' room, and that was the nursery for the baby right next door. Oh. So, so he ran out of guest rooms, kind of. Uh, yes. So this is the guest room you share with Lillian. Uh, we've seen that, but who are these uh, women? Ethel and Lillian seems to be having a little mother-daughter chat. Okay, one thing I do need your help with, really, is keeping track of people's names. I'm terrible okay. at remembering names on the best of days. And with a cast of characters this huge, I'm going to get lost in them pretty damn f fast. Okay. Well, Lillian is Laura's friend who's sitting there in the blue. You All can right. look at each of them to get a description of them. All right. This is the one we came with. Your friend, Lillian Prune, is a rebellious flapper. Like you, she's 20 years old, but unlike you, she's been known to hang out in speakeasies, smoke, and run around with several young men. So she's a party girl. She's assertive and outgoing to the point of obnoxiousness, but underneath it all, you believe her to be a lonely, insecure... Why are we friends with her in the first place? That's a great question. <laughs> I don't really ever say it. We don't, we don't seem to like her very much. Do you like my new outfit, Lil? Ah, uh, not particularly, Mother. I can't type while they're talking. Look, Ethel. Ethel the Frog is a stylishly dressed, overly made-up older woman. Many years of hard drinking has taken their toll on her. Okay, so like mother, like daughter, eh? <laughs> As her face is puffy and red and her skin has wrinkled prematurely. She always seems to have a drink in her hand. You've never met her before, but Ethel is your friend Lillian's mother. Uh, so if I just ask her, ask Lillian about Ethel right in front of her, she's going to pretend she's not even there, right? To see. Mother is who she is, that's all. Okay, let's do that the other way around. Uh, yep. She's right here! Okay, never mind, sorry. Um, I'll, I think I'll just leave them to it. Actually, you know what we should do? Now that we've gotten the introduction underway and we've gotten the mechanics underway, uh, we might want to just end the episode here and then come back to it next week. I'm doing air quotations here because, of course, we'll stay right here where we are, but... Uh, the good people of YouTube will have to wait a week to see the next episode. Um, okay. Is, is there something? Is there something I should try right here at the end, just sort of introduction-wise, before we end the episode? Um, no, not necessarily. I don't think there's anything really important. The nursery. There's nothing in here. It's just a. If you get here quickly enough, you can ask Ethel questions without Lily in present. Uh -huh. But it's not a huge deal. It doesn't really change a lot. Okay. So, so can, can you can you like tease us what's going to happen in the next episode? Will we get hit with a chandelier? 
Ah, well, it depends on where you walk. Ooh, but this is the back upstairs hallway of the mansion. We shall investigate this hallway next week. So, please, like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do. Do leave me a comment, because yeah, I love the comments so much. Uh, that was a weird way of saying that. I apologize to everyone. Um, but anyway, uh, for my friend Josh here and myself, we will uh, see you around the Chrono stream. Bye.